So welcome to the Love Fly podcast. Paul Tizard here, fear of flying coach. And today I have with me the amazing woo, Captain Custard, as he calls himself, Pete Higgins, the creator of the flight checklist, which is proving immensely, immensely popular. And it was a gift that Pete gave to Love Fly. So I can't, I can't thank you enough, Pete, for all the stuff you do. And he's always in the Love Fly Facebook group. So you will see his face. So this is him. This is the real Pete Higgins. Welcome back. Thank you. So Pete's going to give us a bit of an update because he's been away, uh, been so on some extensive travels, but he's also, well, yeah, you, you've got a few things to some stories to share with us and stuff like that. So let's go for it. What? Tell us your, tell us what you've been up to, mate. Well, if you're all sitting comfortably, I will begin. Okay, <laughs> I do a holiday checklist to make sure everything goes all right, and. In August 2022, Janet celebrated her 80th birthday. And Happy I birthday. wanted <laughs> for, for a wonderful memory that we hadn't done before. So I thought of Vietnam. And I did a lot of research into Vietnam. One, the weather. If we'd have gone in August, there could have been heavy rains, um, thunderstorm, mosquitoes fly. So we picked March this year to celebrate her 80th birthday and our 24th wedding anniversary. So you can roughly work out when we got married. Um, the checklist can be very useful if you get something that may upset your booking plans if you paid for the holiday. It can also help doing the checklist in desensitising any fear of flying. So because, hang on, Pete. This is a new checklist by the sound of it. This is not the flight checklist. This is a is this another one or is this the same one you're talking about? No, it, it it's the same one I'm talking about here. Cool. Okay. Shut up, Paul. Right. Okay. With the love fly, you can do exactly what Janet and I do. Um I booked a three-week break. And to do that, I had to make sure that the airline would suit me, which I'm tall six foot two, and I could not face the economy section of any aircraft. After a lot of research, I found that there was only one airline offered premium economy, and that was Eva Air. And they were flying the 78, sorry, the Boeing 777-300s, and they got a good write-up. So with the help of a company called Trail Finders in London, we found the hotel that we wanted, which was right on the Saigon River. So there was wonderful memories there to celebrate our anniversary. So one of the things we do, we always get to the airport early because the M25 around London, if it all goes wrong, we've got different ways to go. So the taxi came at half past two in the afternoon Plenty of time, we're fully relaxed. The big car pulled up, the suitcases went in the back, and an hour and a half later, we were at Heathrow Airport. Utter chaos there, but that's part of the experience. We always, we never get upset. Whatever we see, we just take it in our stride. We only had to wait half an hour before the check-in just opened, and we got checked into premium economy. Then we went for a nice leisurely coffee and observed all the people around. It, it's just so relaxing. So I took away any dangers that the motorway mm. could be blocked, roads could be blocked, anything. I just didn't want anything to go wrong. When we got on board, well, sorry, we checked in and there was a little surprise for Janet. Initially, Janet thought she was only going to Thailand. I didn't tell her about Vietnam. So when it, Janet checked in online quite easy with those little <laughs> kiosks, mine wouldn't do it. I thought, oh, no, now what? So eventually, I got to the desk and Janet was in front. And this woman was saying, what is your final destination? And Janet was saying, Thailand. And they looked. And they couldn't believe it. And they thought, because of security. Mm. So she said, are you sure? She said, yeah, I'm going to Thailand, I'm going to Bangkok. So then I kept and said, uh, not quite. 
I said, we're going to Vietnam first. What followed then was just the check-in lady shrieked out with laughter, clapped. I said, so wedding anniversary and Janet's 80th. And the woman said to Janet, you're not 80. And Janet says, I'm 80. Now he looks at her passport and said, no, you're not. Yes, you are. You're 80. Oh, my God. Then the Eva Air staff came around and the manager came down, a couple of little bags and whatnot, because she phoned the manager and said, we've got an 80-year-old here. Anyway, all got checked in. That was lovely. Got on board the aircraft. And the premium economy was just what I wanted because if you're doing something special, mm. why sit in a 32 inch seat pitch for 11 hours to Bangkok? Yes. Right. So we chose to pay the extra. It wasn't much extra. And we were well looked after by the Eva Air crew. And the on in flight catering was all mm. Asian. It was delicious. But here's the thing I'd like to push across to the love fly community. The Boeing 777-300 is a massive aircraft, but it behaved like a pussycat. The takeoff was <laughs> just as in the flight checklist. In actual fact, we didn't notice the noise abatement. We could hear mm. the engines roar, shot down the runway, lifted off the ground with the normal noises, and I was waiting for the uh, 1,500 feet noise abatement, and I thought, it's so big, you didn't notice it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, 11 hours later, arrived in Bangkok, and you've got so, to be very... Hang on a sec, Pete. What did you do for... So here's, here's a bit of advice then. So what do you? how do you structure 11 hours? Because you're obviously not a nervous flyer, but a lot of people struggle with these longer flights because then they're just not used to sort of being sitting down for 11 hours. So what, how do you manage that? Well, we find that quite easy. Um, number one, we had a comfortable seat, which mm. was important. So that was the first part. Uh, number two, there was lots of movies to watch. And it was a brilliant in-flight entertainment system with the, uh, the part that shows where you're flying. Yeah. Um, we sh so for the first hour, we people watched, they came around with some drinks, and the first hour went by very, very, very quickly. Then we read a couple of magazines, stretched our legs, and because of the time, you've got to, uh, and there's a seven hour time difference, so we were taking that into consideration. Mm. Um, after watching some movies, we walked up and down the cabin a, a, a few times, stretched our legs, and I had my blazer on at the time, and I have a little aircraft bag, a 747 silver bag. That created lots of questions. That led to the love fly being mentioned. Um, you could see the Eva Air Star saying, what? People don't like flying. I yeah, said, no. Yeah. And so we went all through that. Mm. Then went back. By the time the clock was moving, we had a couple of hours sleep watched a couple of movies, and somehow, Paul, the time flew by. I, I, I can't explain it. One minute we're sitting on the plane, and because we're so comfortable and relaxed and not bored, and we're happy in the environment we are in, the time shot by. Mm. You can't get bored. Um, I, have, I was making a diary of what was going on on the aircraft. So I had my little diary out. I was making notes. I observed some of the people around me. Um, that was good. Again, then we got to following the flight map, which was very, very interesting with all the different angles. We then started to make our approach into Bangkok. Now, I know it's going to be hard for the community, but the seatbelt sign did not come on once in that 11 hour flight. Wow. Except for takeoff and landing. All right, we had a few wobbles, but, but that's nothing, is it? Mm. You get that on a high speed train around London or going up to yeah. Scotland, down to yeah, Brighton, yeah. South Coast. Um, the landing, which I was very interested in, I like landing, especially if I've taken off. Yeah, 
I like to. I like there to be both. It was hardly noticeable. The as soon as we came down to the cloud base, as in the flight checklist, there was a few mm. wobbles. That's mm -hmm. expected. Seatbelts yep. was on then. Aircraft landed, reverse thrust, and that part was lovely. We were actually in Bangkok. But now, this is what I think the community will be interested in. We had to catch another plane. Um, was it? Oh, Vietnam Airlines, a brand new A350, a huge great aeroplane. Mm. So to do that, we our flight was operated with a minimum collecting time for the next available aircraft. I don't follow those rules. I have seen so many times where people have got an hour and a half to swap, then things go wrong. Our aircraft could have been delayed on takeoff. Mm. It could have been held in a holding pattern around Bangkok. Yeah. And we could have landed and we might have missed the flight. Now, that can have a lot of consequences. A lot of people think when they miss the flight, oh, they put you on the next one. Not if it's full. They put you on the next available flight. And I've seen a couple of stories on the internet, mm. a honeymoon couple where the minimum collecting time, they missed their flight and they couldn't get a flight until the next day. Mm. So to avoid that, I booked the connecting flight three hours after we land, the next available flight. That way, we're on it. Mm. So that made a, a lot of sense. And that's yeah, a, sensible. a very sensible thing to do. If you can do it, book the next available flight. So it gets better now because when we were going through passport control, did all that to check, they said to us, um, oh, you're over 70. This happened twice. Oh, join that queue there. And because we're over 70, we went to a, a passport office. There was no one there, just us two. <laughs> and I said, well, that's brilliant. She said, this, we do this for all people over 70. What a pity they don't do it in the rest of the world. So eventually... I agree. We, yeah, eventually we found ourselves at the uh, Vietnam Airlines checking disc. A few language problems, but with my smile, trying to keep them calm, they, I managed to say to them, we're going to Vietnam, where are you staying? I said, the Villa Song. Um, whatever. So we got <laughs> on board. Then... <laughs> Now, here comes the, the exciting bit. I could not, be, I've been on the A350 a few times, but the economy section was massive. Really? I, I had a 34 inch seat pitch in economy. Basically, everyone was on board, and I've got my diary going. I'm looking at the aircraft, the cabin crew. Beautiful Asian people, they're men and women, they're very, very good looking men and, and women. The aircraft took off, it, it had a different sound to it, which I noticed. So I said to Janet, Now, this is different. So I found that interesting. It was um, not a whistle, but a wiring noise I hadn't heard before. Mm. And it, it took off, roared down the runway. The two pussycats on the wing, purring away, got louder and louder and louder. <laughs> And we climbed up and the noise abatement, I didn't notice. And then in that one hour flight, we got served a lovely meal with coffee. For in a one hour flight, I couldn't believe it. I was absolutely stunned. Mm. They came around with a refill and then one hour, two minutes later, we touched down in Vietnam. So, so far that connecting flight later on really paid off because Bangkok airport is packed. Vietnam airport was packed. It was just people everywhere. <laughs> so we go get to Bank uh, to Ho Chi Minh City and there we went through the usual things of getting out. And when we got outside in the heat, it was about 90 something degrees, with the hordes of people 
there was this man with a sign, Janet and Pete Higgins, London. And a great big car, because all that was taken care of. So trail finders in London provided limousine service. Then we were taken to our hotel right on the Saigon River. Now that, that was great. So, so far, Janet's 80th birthday is going to according to my plan. So the other thing that I would help suggest to people to do, and I've got a little note here, if anything goes wrong or things go missing, in our hand luggage, we always carry copies of our passport, colour copies of the passport. Janet has one in her hand luggage. I have mm. one in mine. Driving licence. We carry that for identity. Insurance documents in case of hospital visit and the contact numbers. And the bit that, that I met a policeman there, he said a lot of people that get their iPhone stolen, but keep a copy of the iPhone purchase with the IMEI number or the serial number. Because if you have to report anything stolen, that's the one thing they want. So we mm. have a copy of that in case it gets stolen. So that's another little backup plan there. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I loved about this hotel, and I'm sure the Love Fly community might agree with me, as we sat having an evening meal, uh, right on the Saigon River, not far away, you could see all these aircraft coming in and they were turning with the landing lights on, one after the other. Mm. And beautiful with a sunset behind that was after the journey. Look, that's what we've done. It was hard to believe that we were actually in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I couldn't, it's just... It, Have you been there before then? No. Mm. So it was just so hard to believe. And the staff, when they knew it was Janet's 80th birthday, they came up with a cake, happy birthday, on the cake, oh. and lit the candle and sang happy birthday to Janet. So that was also, so far, going very well. Then there was a couple of little adventures that I urge people, if they can think outside the box, don't let age be a barrier Mm. to enjoying yourself. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I can't do it, I'm 50 years of age. I'm 60. Mm. So we booked um, a trip on the Saigon River to Ho downtown Ho Chi Minh, and the hotel had a free launch, a high-speed launch. We were the only two on it. They took us to downtown Ho Chi Minh City. We had a look around, very exciting, quite safe. Never, we never felt any danger. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we got a taxi back to the hotel with millions of motorbikes. I've never seen so many motorbikes in all my life. The next day was another bit of icing on the cake. We booked a Mekon Delta tour. What we didn't know was the boats were like canoes. And <laughs> You know, all the, we were the oldest two in our group, and the couple of them, I think they were some were tw like, like teen, no, 20s, 30s, students going around the world and things like that. And um, the tour leader said, uh, you okay? Yeah, fine. He said, they, said, how? they said to me, how old are you? I said, well, I'm 79, 80 next year. I said, how old is your wife? Because they were all much younger, so I said, Janet's 80, and he went, Okay, right. They said, okay, we'll help you on to the boats. How insulting. <laughs> I was beginning to feel my age, but we weren't going to be beaten. <laughs> so we stopped off at a rest point with lots of, uh, right on the Mekong Delta, and eventually we got taken to our boat, and I thought, oh, my God. Mm. We had to walk down this narrow plank, and I thought, well, and Janet just had a cataract done, one of them, and so she can see very well. And I looked at it and the boat's wobbling. So these two Vietnamese people got hold of Janet's hand and gently mm. walked down, followed by the 
some of the other people that the tourists that we were with, they helped her down the steps. And eventually, <coughs> I did the same. And then one of the ladies sitting there said, Are you, are you 80? I could hear that blow. Oh, yeah. 80? I said, Yeah. And you're doing this? I said, Yes. Yeah. Wow. And she said, I hope I do it when I get to it. She's only about 20 years of age. I hope I can do what you do when I'm 80. So we proceeded on our tour up the Mekong Delta towards Cambodia and we stopped off. I don't get your diary. Now, here's something we always keep a diary of events. Yeah. yeah. To, just to, to look back on and enhance holiday. Now, if the Love Fly people keep a diary, I think it'll be good for them, especially on the plane. Right down, boarded the plane, flew to Bangkok, the food, keep a diary of the landing, and they find that it's the same wording every time they fly. <clears throat> so we stopped off at a Vietnamese island, and getting off the boat was, oh, wow. And so two people had to walk the plank, hold their hands out, and Janet, and they said, to Janet, grip my wrist tightly, and we did it. But yeah, I wouldn't want to do it again, but we did it. <laughs> when we got to the island, we had a look around. It was all farming island, which was really lovely, flowers everywhere. We went for a meal, and then they served piranha fish. <clears throat> so I thought, oh my, uh, with a complimentary glass of snake wine. Mm, yum. <laughs> so <laughs> we we turned down the piranha fish and oh, it's such a fussy <laughs> eater. We tried the piranha fish, which was okay, and there were some other foods we didn't understand, but the snake wine we let go. So that was that, and then we went a bit more to it around back on the Mekon Delta and then back to the hotel. <laughs> And before you know it, the week just flew by. Mm. So, so far, it's an adventure, especially for our age. And I'm sure many of the love fly people will be thinking, I can't do that. Mm. But they might be 70 or 60 or 50. Yes, you can. Mm. If we can do it, you can do it. Mm. So then we got ready to go back to Ho Chi Minh City Airport. Now, I did my homework here, and I knew from the write-ups that it can be very busy with thousands of motorbikes. So the guy said, I'll bring the car about two hours before. No, I want, can you come three and a half hours before? They said, I oh, will get you there in time. I said, yeah, there's a language barrier. We won't know where we are. And mm. I, I should be able to go through, sit down, relax. Yeah, exactly. Watch the aircraft, knowing that I'm going to be on the plane. So it came three and a half hours before, and we got to the airport about, it took about 45, 50 minutes. And then when we got there, the check in desk was nobody there. That was the easy bit. It checked us in for Thai smiles. Uh, and then there was just, Cues galore. What's a Thai smiles? An A320 Airbus. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, how now, do you feel going with all these different airlines? Do you ever sort of does? Do you ever research them, or are you ever worried about them? No, it's exciting. <laughs> Tick it off. Hmm. I mean, with Thai smiles. Um, oh, first of all, I'll come up to that because when we got to passport control. There was about 10 queues mm. over an hour long, but we didn't know which one to get on. There was nobody to ask because no one spoke English. An observation I made was that I said to Janet, there's hardly any wheelchairs here. And I found that interesting, having been with special assistants, because I found that in the queues, there might be a young man and a young woman maybe really holding the arms of a very senior person mm. so in vietnam they seem to look after their older people on a personal basis oh nice somehow it took about an hour and a half to get to passport control 
um, just checked us in and we went through, got to the gate and we just had a coffee and watched the aircraft and that was lovely. So mm-hmm. we had an hour and a half of spirit and we enjoyed it. The aircraft came in, Thai smiles. It's a bit like EasyJet compared to British Airways or Virgin Atlantic. Yeah, sort of no frills then, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. But when we got on board, I thought, Blum, it's an A320. Now, I can't remember. I think they're quite old. But who's bothered with old? Because everything's going to work. I'm not bothered with how old it is, because we've been on Dakota's, Terry and Dove, and Drag and Rapids, and World War II planes, and paratroop planes. But when we got on board, it was, like, brand new. Mm. I thought, wait a minute. And I said to this lady, I said, is this an A320? She said, yeah. I said, but it's all new. She said, oh, no, we refurbish everything. New seats, new upright. Their uniforms were stunningly orange, beautiful. So eventually sat down, plenty of leg room, took off as per the flight checklist. I didn't notice any noise abatement, but I, it did carry out, but I wasn't bothered by it because we get so used to it. And for the one-hour flight, they served another meal. Hmm. I thought, this, this, you can have sandwich, cake, a little hot snack, mm. a bit of coffee. Because that sort of disappeared a bit in the UK, hasn't it? I don't know about other countries, but in the UK, the shorter flights you get, we'd be lucky if you get a bottle of water now. It's, it's all been trimmed back since the pandemic. We noticed that. That's the sad part of, about mm. it. And mm. so one of the tricks that, well, we don't do it, but on a short flight to, say, Spain or Gibraltar, couple of hours but i would say buy your water in the duty-free area and rather than pay all the prices mm. um oh, I, I interrupted I, your flow peak you go mate <laughs> yeah that, that, that's one thing to do is buy it in the duty-free but i was quite surprised at that mm. and also what was the icing on the cake they were walking up and down is everything okay everything okay chatting away there the cabin crew probably man. just checking you're still alive, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Our whole work was just great. And we were the only, uh, going back a step, we were the only English people in that Vietnam hotel and we were the only English people on the flight. I said to her, are there any other English people on here? She said, no, you're the only ones. Mm. And, uh, so eventually we made our approach into Bangkok which was really exciting, um, very smooth. By the way, with that flight out and back, the seatbelt sign never came on. We flew all that way, and I thought, no one in Love Fly is going to believe this. No turbulence, except when we came down to a bit of cloud level, there was just that bit as you go through. Yeah, the a bobble, yeah. Yeah, underneath it. Then we landed, and then eventually suitcases, oh, passport control. When we saw the queues for passport control, I thought, oh, my God, look at this lot. It was massive. <laughs> then a security officer came up and said, where you come from? I said, uh, Ho Chi Minh. Oh, OK. OK, you're, how old are you? So I said, 79, and Janet, 80. Oh, they sent us to a cubicle with a passport officer with no one there. And I thought, amazing. You know, so it's, it seems to me if you stay alive, stay alive long enough, there are definitely some advantages. <laughs> there are some advantages, yeah. But anyway, we got outside uh, Bangkok and there, it was boiling hot. It was, it was about, what, about 11 or 12 o'clock, hundreds and hundreds of people and cars. And then again, Janet and Peter Higgins, Trail Finders London. And this huge great car turns out. I thought, wow. Mm. I mean, just imagine. And in two hours, we we're on our way down to Pattaya, where we chose a hotel carefully because it was on the beach. And we wanted to come out of the hotel and walk on the beach. That was nice. And it had a little private section, which was great. And then on my idea was to chill out and do nothing. So that was great. And then one of the icing on the cake was the, I had me love for a T-shirt on 
And one person said to me, what's that love like? And I explained and I got some cards out. I said, yeah, that's a card. I had to photocopy some, so I've got the photocopy. Oh, I'll card. send you some more, mate. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right. <laughs> and um, he was amazed. And there we met people who had a fear of flying. And so I gave them all the love fly details, which was great. And then someone said, oh, can I take your photograph? So we sat on this sort of swing with a sunset behind, and people were taking their photograph with a love fly hat and a T-shirt, which I'll, I'll put on Facebook soon. But one thing that blew me away was the um, hotel staff are absolutely fabulous. And they said, um, I went in and I had the hat on. What, what do you do then? I said, oh, I just help people with the fear of flying. She said, this is, I mean, check it in the suitcase. She said, what's, what's all that? He said, but people don't like flying. And I said, no, they don't, so we help them. So a little brief conversation, whatever you do, you must go to Terminal 21. I said, okay, what's that? She said, it's the biggest mall with all done out like duty free. So I've got some photos which I've sent you and it was just amazing. Outside where people are sitting, there's a huge great jet stuck on a pole in the middle of all the diners. I couldn't believe it. And another one behind it. Inside is Dubai, Tokyo, Japan. And you could think it was in duty free. Again, I thought this would help desensitize people. Mm. They had a fear. They're in that environment, and it really did feel like an airport. That just strange feeling. So we spent the afternoon there, then we, we came back, and that was what it was all about. So I would urge people to think outside the box. Don't let age be a barrier. Make the planning of your holiday part of it. Mm. Always expect the unexpected. Janet and I were ready for a diver. We were ready for an abortive takeoff. We were ready for anything that might happen. Now, we've experienced that. Um, we were just to give people in love flying some salt. Make anything like that part of the holiday. Don't get annoyed with it. Make it part of the experience. On a flight to New York, there were thunderstorms. We got diverted to Philadelphia. We had to wait, and then thunderstorms cleared, and now 747 took off from Philadelphia to New York. It's only a two-hour train ride, but he did it. Hmm. Um, we've had an abortive takeoff. No, no drama. This was in Cancun. Mm. hurtling down the runway. Now, this is the amazing part about flying and how safe it is. Now, I'm not saying this to alarm people, but this is all part of the flying experience. As we were hurtling down the runway, Janet said, this, this aircraft's not taking off. And I was listening for the noises, and I said, why? And before I could think why, I understand from Steve that they apply the full brakes, the brakes, aircraft came to a halt, so something wasn't right. Mm. And the cabin crew, if you could have seen the cabin crew that were sitting opposite us, they said, oh, no, not a night in Cancun, please. <laughs> that said it all. Yeah. They weren't bothered by it. Mm. This weren't bothered by it at all. Oh, please, God, no. I've, I've had enough of Cancun. <laughs> anyway, the next minute, we were surrounded by fire engines and whatnot, which is good because, as you said in many of the um, mm. podcasts, it gives them something to do and practice. Yes. We were taken off the aircraft. Um, all it was was I don't, if anybody drives a car and the front wheel's out of balance, you get a steering wheel wobble. Yeah. I've forgotten what it's called now. And the Every front wheel. <laughs> <laughs> And all it was, was the nose wheel was out of balance. So they put us up in a, a massive hotel, eat and drink what you like. Great. Absolutely great. 
But that a lot of people got angry with it. And mm. I was amazed at the scenes I saw because they hadn't planned for the unexpected in the brain. I've got to go to work the next day. Yeah. And I, so I said to them, but this captain's just done a wonderful job to look after you. Yes. Yeah, but who's going to open? And then another woman said, my kids are going to school tomorrow. And I, I said, but you're safe. The, it didn't work. Because no, they I just bet they didn't. But you were popular. <laughs> <laughs> well, even when we got to this hotel, they kept coming up because they knew that we were fear of flying when we were virgin. Yeah? Mm. And I said, that is a marvellous thing that Captain did. Think yeah. about it. Yeah, it yeah. really is great. You can have a, an accident in a car. You break hard to avoid something. If your engine starts making a funny noise or a warning light comes on, you pull over. Mm. It's the same with a car, an aeroplane. Even if a ship's got something wrong with it, it'll get someone to look at it. Yeah. That was really, really good. So the next day, we all got taken back to the aircraft. And what was amazing was they were still working on the front wheel and there were people who wouldn't get on. And mm -hmm. I said to them, it won't go if it's not right. I said, think about it. The captain's got to go home. The flight deck, there's three officers on the flight deck. They've got to go home. Mm -hmm. They've got families. They've got cats and dogs. Got to go to Tesco's. They've got to do all the shopping. They're not going to do it. <laughs> so that, that was, they say got on board and the plane took off and we made our way to London. It took about, I don't know, 10 hours. And another one that we experienced was an abortive takeoff. Uh, I was on a flight on Royal Jordanian to Amman, mm. uh, going to Petra, hurtling down the runway, and it didn't take off. And it pulled the brakes on, and a lot of upset. <laughs> this, <laughs> they forgot the luggage. Yeah, it was quite important. Yeah. <laughs> and another one we had an abortive takeoff, which um, was very, very similar on Eastern Airlines, flying from Miami to the Bahamas. Um, I forgot the luggage. Hello, folks. Captain here. Well, we've got a little problem, you know, this American accent. And he said, well, we're just going to nip back and pick up the bags. Uh, won't be long. <laughs> so... Let, let flying be all part of the experience. If there's mm. anything, take it in, take it in your stride. And then hopefully the Love Fly community will see some of the wonderful things that Johnny Levi experienced. Just as an example, the world is our oyster. As you can, we haven't been together that long compared to our age issues, but we did an air safari over Kenya in a converted parachute plane. I mean, go for it. And when we were and the pilot, he only looked to be about 15, but he must have been about 20. <laughs> short sunglasses. Threw us, I said to this young guy, are we going near Mount Kilimanjaro? He said, yeah. I said, go, oh, well, I'll get some good photos. He said, well, I'll go as close as I can for us because I have my Virgin Atlantic hat on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we've got some amazing photos. And then as we were going to the Masai Mara, uh, he said, hello, folks, we're just going to fly around the air, grass airfield because we want to make sure there are no lions on there. We don't want you to be on the menu. And, <laughs> and then we landed in the Masai Mara. Another one which I'm hoping love fly, if you all get a chance to do a seaplane. Mm. That was amazing. We flew for about 11 hours to the Maldives, to Mali. It's a taxi. I think it's a Dash 8 de Havilland or something with floats. With Australian captain with shorts on, flip-flops. It was just like Indiana Jones. I was in hysteric. <laughs> and Janet loved it. There were people there gripping the armrest. Mm. I said, oh, this is what this guy does. Took off, flew for 45 minutes down to the equator, and the landing was just like Indiana Jones. As it came into land, it 
the nose went down and for one or maybe 20 seconds all you could see was water through the windscreen then they pulled the stick back for that flare and it just gently rested on the on the sea so there's lots of things it can do mm. helicopter rod janet and i've been on three helicopters love fly community expand your horizons if you can do a helicopter flight take the ball by the horn don't be beaten by it tackle mm. your fear we did one in puerto rico we flew around Barbados in helicopters, we've flown in London, we've had flying lessons in England, uh, Jersey Channel Island. Yeah. I don't, I didn't particularly like that because I couldn't stop looking at the window, all the beautiful scenery. But that wasn't for me, I just wanted to have a go. Um, let me just check some things here. Uh, Sandy Beach, Maltese, Kenya, East. Yeah, Egypt, the Nile crew. So, let's go back. Plan the holiday with love fly in mind that you're going to have a good time. We can do it. You can do it. I mean, Janet's 81 this year. I'm 80 next year. And for our 25th wedding anniversary, we've got a flight planned for Fuerteventura in the Canary Islands mm, to an nice. adult only hotel. Seven nights. It wasn't easy to find, but we, we've done that. And um, so that'll be for the 25th. So a lot of planning there. Mm. Health-wise, because we've always got to make sure our health is all right. Um, yeah, having said that, I'll just remind you, before we go away, we always have a dental checkup. Because the last thing we want is a raging toothache on holiday. We've had that in Mauritius, and it had a terrible toothache. Mm. Had to drive 80 odd miles to a dentist. Um, so with a check, with a dental checklist, you know, have a dentist do it, do all that work, and that's one of the things that we always do. So that's a good idea, actually. And thought about that. Well, we when I was on Virgin Atlantic, I had a couple of cases where the insurance company, I'm not. sure, this is what I learned. I don't know if it's true or not. It wouldn't pay out because they hadn't had a dental checkup for five years. Mm. Uh, that, and I said, oh, right. And yeah, so they had to pay the hospital or the dentist bills. I'm not sure if that's still in place or yeah, what. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess it's kind of reasonable if your insurance company think if, if you know, you're. If someone goes away, they haven't been near a dentist for five years. It is that's quite a risk, isn't it? You know, yeah. Know, yeah. There was a couple more that um, there was a guy whose car broke down, and uh, I was booking his flight with Virgin Atlantic, and the insurance company come back and said, "Can you send me records of your service history?" It didn't happen. <laughs> it just topped it up with all. Didn't have anything done to it, uh, mm. and uh, again. Yeah, that proved that they wouldn't pay out. So always expect the unexpected, Paul. I'm hoping that this will help the Love Fly community. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. I mean, it's lovely it's also to hear about your trip. I, I love the detail as you're going through all the different bits and uh, and how you're so not bothered by the aircraft, who, who's, who it's with, what type of aircraft. That doesn't seem to even register for you, you know. No, that when we flew Malaysia, we were in Kuala Lumpur flying to Koh Samui, and we were flying. I don't know what this is. I never heard of it before, but I was excited. Another one to tick off, not like collecting stamps. <laughs> but I did. I, I really, and we got on board for this one-hour flight, and it was a brand new aircraft of some description. And on the way, we had the most beautiful hot. Thai meal. I don't know what it was, but it was just beautiful, beautiful tasting. Served by wonderful staff, and we love Koh Samui. That's one of the places I'd love to go back to. Mm. We we've never been back to anywhere twice. But as we get to the autumn years, I think I'm I'm a party autumn year. I think we're in our winter years now of life. <laughs> we might have to start thinking of coming a bit closer to land. I mean, one day they're not going to insure us that 
Yeah. Our insurance premiums are sky high. Uh, yeah, that's another problem to, to factor in. Mm. And also, the, when we did the insurance, for peace of mind, what we did, we wrote down all the medical details that we had as per the doctor. Now, this is interesting. They wrote, wrote down all the medication and the dosage, and has it changed in the last 12 months or two years? Well, when we ran an insurance company, um, I had it all written down. They said, oh, you know all this. I said, I've got it all here. So they asked, what do you take, what pill, and how long you've been taking it, and what was the dose before? So expect the unexpected. Mm. Have all the insurance details at hand when booking, because if you miss something out, they're not going to pay out if yeah. you don't get it right. Yeah. Cover all cover all aspects. I mean, if you're still uncertain, you could go to a broker, but I don't know anybody that does insurance brokers, but they're going to ask you the same questions. Mm. Co cover all the angles. Then coming back, Coming back to Heathrow, just getting back, that was the worst part, was coming home from London Heathrow. It was a nightmare. It was a long walk from where the plane landed to, to get the bags. I thought, gosh. When we got the bags, the taxi driver rang up, and sadly I didn't understand his accent. And uh, God bless him, he's, and he got annoyed because we couldn't find where these taxis were. Mm. <laughs> Took us half an hour and it charged us another £20 waiting fee. So, yeah, that, that's nice, it. nice end to the holiday, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that, when you think of the way it works outside where they're all waiting. But Heathrow is just so big and busy. Mm. To my surprise, one of the other things that happened at Heathrow, <clears throat> then it went through this automatic passport reader and it, it didn't like it. So she got directed to a, a booth where it was, was very short and I managed to put mine in and we went through. So <clears throat> they're all getting to be to be like that. But I hope this will give people inspiration um, to do things outside the box. Um, mm. We've got a friend in Germany who's got a light aircraft and he knew... We <laughs> He knew we were going over there. His name is Peter, same as me, and we, we were in the Black Forest, and it was like watching a low, a low with that accent. I would like to take you up in my little aeroplane. And we got <laughs> to this airfield. <laughs> oh, no. And he flew us all over the Black Forest. Oh, amazing. In a, I think it was a Cessna or something like that, down the Rhine, River Rhine, is it? Down there. Yeah. For one hour on the house. And it's in my pleasure to help people from London. So that that really was if so there's a lot of people on the flight, does a small flight help. Mm. But when you think of the people that do it, one of our uh, group experts, um, I think Geese's got a pilot yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, she's yes. Marvellous. Take it, take it, take the ball by the horn. Go for it. And if what we say to people, when you do it, what controls they use, it's the same as on a jumbo. You've got up, down, left, right. No, you're losing me now with your technical stuff. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> I hope it helps people because we want people to enjoy some of the things that, that we've seen, some of the wonderful sights all around the world. We'd love to, like, they can do this. This is why I believe in it. Mm. They can. I mean, failure is not an option, and I like some of the points you make. Um, without being too rude, sorry, I'm doing it. Just take, just do it, go for it. Now, that leads me to another point with love flying. Some of the things we all do things we don't like. We go to the dentist. Mm. We don't like it. So think about it. You know you're going to be in pain. You're hoping that it'll be a check. Oh, fine. There you, are. there you go. Give me $100. All done. See you in six months. Or you might say, oh, dear. Then you know pain's coming. But you still go to a dentist. You do, yeah. You get it over with. You get it done. Going to the hospital. What if? What if? 
but they're there to help you. Mm. And for me, my biggest stress, shopping. Oh. <laughs> now, for married men, not good. Sorry. <laughs> not so long ago, shopping mall. Now, think about a fear. My fear of shopping was up there. I had no checklist to overcome the fear of shopping. <laughs> Go inside, and Janet said, there was a dress I want to try on. Now, I'm thinking positive. She tried to dress on. What do you think of it? I said, I don't like it. Boom. Why? What's wrong? <laughs> so now we're flying. You don't get any of that. But all I did was go to the shop and I got grief. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Don't you like the colour? I said, I don't think it suits you. Why not? I said, Dad, you know why I don't come shopping with you? You want it? Buy it. <laughs> don't you, if you don't get any of that with flying. All the stress is taken away by expert captains on the flight deck. Mm -hmm. Cabin crews that know what they're doing. When you think how well cabin crew are trained to do the job, people like David Gott that used to give the presentation, his presentations were marvellous in helping mm -hmm. people and what cabin crew goes through. You know you're in a safe environment there with no conflict. Um, not so long ago, my Stephen took me to Hong Kong for a week. He was working out there. And um, there were four captains on board. Oh, well, four flight decks. Some were sleeping because it was, I think it was 13 hours because they had to fly a little bit slower. Um, right. right. When we got to Kowloon, they all said, um, so you've been Virgin Atlantic? I said, that's right. We do the fear of flying. And I mentioned it all. And they looked past and said, if I wasn't going home, if I thought I wasn't going back to London, I wouldn't be here with you. I wouldn't do it. And there was all the cabin crew were all around the table and, and the first officer and they said, no, Pete, it, it's safe. We just mm. couldn't do it. Initially, they couldn't understand that people had a fear. And um, one guy actually said, well, I've got to cut the grass when I go, but I've got things to do. They, they're just normal people. So... Think about the flight deck, the cabin crew. They've all got things to do when they get back. And they'll get back safely. And another part that you've made, which I really like sometimes when I read this, there's a couple of bits you've mentioned that about this turbulence. Now, I like the part where you said, well, if you don't get on, the plane's still going to go. And the other, they're going to get there, whether you're on it or not. And mm -hmm. it's going to go back. It's going to go back and forth. So turbulence isn't, shouldn't be a problem. Just go with it. I really, I really think that's important. If you don't get on because you're frightened of turbulence, then learn to understand what turbulence is and just rock around. Now, one confession I've got to make to, to help finalise this, when we landed in Heathrow, that 13 hour flight, which I don't, it just flew by, I fell asleep in the landing. I was so annoyed. We started our descent, I could hear the speed, speed brakes come on anyway. The next minute, boom, reverse thrust. Janet said, we landed. I, I missed it. <laughs> now, if I can do that, anybody can do it. Just, is there, just that little gentle sway as it's coming into land with the autopilot doing its job, the auto thrust. I was aware of the different noises with mm. the auto thrust and that. Mm. But it was like being on a train. It was just like being sent to sleep. Have I covered everything that might be useful there, Paul? Is there anything I've missed out? No, I always love listening to you, Pete. I just find it, uh, you just normalise a lot of things that people worry about, you know, and I, I love the detail that you went through it and the fact you talk about all these different airlines and different types of aircrafts and it, none of it phases you, you know? No. The, uh, I always, I mean, when we fly to, um, I think we're on a Max 737 Max, mm. there's a lot of remarks on that. Wow, I can't wait to try it. 
exciting. In fact, we got a list of all the aircraft we've flown. And I urge people to, if they get a chance to fly different aircraft, try it. In Egypt, we flew on a Boeing 727 from Cairo to... 727. Yeah, where you walk up the back. You walk up the back of it, and it's the only one with the steps up the back side, and you walk up the back, and we were flying to some big pyramid. I've forgotten what it's called. Abu Simbel. The aircraft had no name. I was in hysterics. It was like a Clint Eastwood movie, a plane with no name outside. Just a number. Big billows of white round things taking cold air in because it's over 100. When we got inside, I've never seen so many rosary beads. I was, I said, what's the matter with these people? I said, to him, was, anyway, the 727 took off and it was just, I was so excited. I thought, blimey, a 727. Mm. And then another one we flew, which had wooden panels down the side. We were flying from somewhere in Egypt to another part. And it was a 707. Wow. It was, it was just beautiful. The 707 was just beautiful. So how, old, how old's that, you know? Well, I think they were in the 60s when they were flying the Beatles around, weren't they? Flying from London. And this, and the, I think it was only four of us on board. That was just, just amazing. But I loved the little wooden panels down the side and the cushions. It was, that was really great. And then on another flight we chose, we went to, Nairobi, then we had to change planes to go down to somewhere in Kenya. It was a BAC 111, 500, noisy. <laughs> when we got inside, I thought, God, this is what we grew up with. When we were like 18, 19, 20, the 111s and the DC 10s, and then we took off, and it was noisy, but exciting noise. Mm. Absolutely amazing. So, yeah, there's lots of different aircraft that we've flown. We've flown all the Airbus range, all the 747 range. Um, luckily, I've managed to do three Concorde flights, which was really exciting. And um, Janet's done flights I haven't been to. She flew on an airline to Turkey, on a Turkish airline, and she said to help a friend who had a fear of flying, Janet took someone to Turkey because she didn't want to fly alone. So I stayed at home while Janet was the escort. And she's the Turkish airline. She said it was an unbelievable quality of service and mm. in-flight country. So good on Janet for doing that. And so um, Tell me about the Concorde. I've, I've never got a chance to go on one of those. I was used to see them. But what was that like? That was amazing. Um this is hard to believe, but this is really happening. I was working out in, I think it was Seychelles or Mauritius, I can't remember. And I was say the Seychelles. So our 747 landed in the Seychelles, followed by Air France behind it. And I was doing some travel reports for somebody out there on the feasibility of London Seychelles. And um, I was sitting alone at breakfast. And um, this woman with a beautiful French accent, oh my God, that, it was just so romantic. It was music in my ears. Hello, Pierre, you Pierre, you're bonjour. <laughs> she was cabin crew on the one behind, the Air France. And she said, um, oh, I join you for dinner this evening, you know? Oh, oui, oui. So that was lovely. We jumped in. Anyway, to cut a long story short, she said, have you been on Concord? I said, no. And I don't know how she did it, but she gave me a ticket for Concord. And she if I, I can't remember how it worked, but if, you, if they don't use it, they lose it. For the, it's something to do with a year or something like that. I can't remember. Anyway, I ended up going to New York on Air France Concord. Wow. Beautiful. That is, that is a great story. And what was it like, you know? Uh, you don't feel the speed. Um, you can see the Mac One, Mac Two, whatever it is, and um, yeah, it, it was nice. The bit, the, an observation, if I had to sell it, was all the men 
were by the window. Well, I could, and the women were in the aisle. The men were trying to look out the window, and the women were chatter, chatter, chatter across to each other, and about nothing about a plane about shopping and what are they going to do. But the men were excited at being on Concord, so that was great. Then I did another couple. Um, <clears throat> we flew to Paris, and we flew from Paris somewhere for about two or three hours, then landed in Manchester, and we did two of those on, on the Concord. So very, very exciting. And luckily, my Stephen, he's been on Concord, you know, being cabin crew, and um, he, he's, he's flown it. And a lot of people have used to do those 199 pound experience trips, but I'm, they've gone. Mm. So the Concord one was really nice. Having said that, I still like the 747-400. Yeah, I, I love that aircraft. I mean, would, what, what was your favourite aircraft, would you say, of all? The 747-400. Okay, so that was an easy one. <laughs> yeah, I, it, they're just pussycats in the sky. That Whatever the captain says, it would do. Mm. I mean, can you remember Dominic Riley? He always used to make me laugh. An aeroplane doesn't know it's an aeroplane, but it do what it's told. Often, so if it pushes the stick forward, it gets faster. I, 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 there's some lovely thoughts there, isn't it? Mm. When you do it, an aeroplane does not know it's an aeroplane, yet whatever the first officer, the captain, or the, the check, flight check the officer says to do, the aircraft will do it. They just do everything you want it to do. So I, I, I just I just think that it's so true. So therefore, I'm hoping that people will get some like out of all these stories we 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 I've told today. Don't let age be a barrier. Plan your holiday. Mm. Have some fun when you're doing it. Keep a diary if you can, so you can <clears throat> look back and then you might want to change something later. <coughs> I'm Microsoft Excel, we've got a checklist and we've got all the clothes, all the things to take. I put Janet and Peter, Bangkok, Thailand, 2023. And then anything we didn't need, we can tick off and or replace. We have a checklist. That's part of the holiday. Mm. I just wish we didn't take too many clothes. It was so hot, we didn't wear them. It was boiling hot just t-shirt short summer dress and the dresses to buy out in some of these places they're so small we got we met cabin crews at, uh, in london that when they go to africa on certain airlines they just buy local clothes out there then leave them behind and just take hand luggage it's just a, a way of looking at it we met people in mm. the rica when we were flying down the costa rica some had, I said, that's a small case. They've got a bigger one. No, no, no. I'll just buy what I want. And then when I come back, I'll just give it all away and come back with the same luggage. I thought, wow. Yeah, what a way to, I've never thought like that. It feels so sort of wasteful. I suppose as long as it gets given to somebody else and it's useful, then it's not a waste, is it? No, it, do, it does. Yeah, it gets given to other people. It really, it really does. And I thought that was really nice. And when when I flew recently to Jersey and the Channel Islands, I just had uh, this one little hand luggage, and I thought if I need anything, I'll buy it and leave it behind. I didn't want to check in a suitcase. Mm. I think going back to the icing on the cake for all our travels were that um, was when I met Janet. I don't know if Janet's going to be annoyed at this, but I met Janet through um, where you dine, dining club. Because after we both divorced, so we know that. So, and we hit it off, which was great. And then as time progressed, I said, Would you like to go on holiday? So we went to Sri Lanka on Air Lanka or Sri Lanka Airlines, A340, beautiful flight, about 11 or 12 hours. And to cut a long story short, this is if you're planning something special. Now, I didn't plan this, but I also had a mental checklist that I didn't want things to go wrong. Mm. And it was boiling hot, beautiful weather. Then 
but it was just a laugh and a joke. Now, because of divorce, we don't have many relatives left now because a lot of them have moved on and you lose friends after divorce. So we were lucky to meet. So one afternoon, about four o'clock, it's amazing. Where do they go at four o'clock? I let you decide. But couples have disappeared, which left just Janet and me in the pool. So I looked around carefully and then got down on one knee in the pool and said, Janet, will you marry me? Mm-hmm. And she said, yes. Then there was a scream from behind a bush. And it was a couple of us, those Mario, Louise and Dick, and they came out clapping. Well, we stayed friends with them. That was expensive, but it was nice. So they ended up the next day going to Colombo, finding, I think it was a yellow sapphire ring, which led to a friendship with Mario Louise and Dick, which led to we were married at sea on the Caribbean Sea in a yacht once owned by Princess Grace Kelly of Monaco. So this love story and the love of flying, it paid off. It, you know, Janet liked flying. She's had flying lessons. I've got photos of her in an aircraft at Bigham Hill Airport. Mm. We both lived by Croydon Airport in the early 50s, which was when I understand it was the largest airport in the world before 1939. So we were so used to seeing chipmunks, dragon rapids, ostras, Dakotas, all going in one after the other. And in those days, we only had a black and white telly. And every time a Dakota went over, the black and white picture would wobble. Then, of course, now we've got the modern technology. So we were married at sea. And that was nice because there was only a few people there. Was, and my son Stephen came, he had a friend with him. Paul in America, a, a deep, dear friend of ours. So there was eight people at the wedding and did a couple of cruises on there. And that was, and we were married by a minister of religion. So it's always legal. Um, the boat was swaying around a bit. So we had to hold on a bit as the gentle waves of the turquoise. <laughs> and there's one part in the video where that is quite funny. I, the, 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 Minister said, Peter, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? And I didn't answer. So Janet pushes the flowers in my tummy. I said, yes, yes, I do. And yeah, <laughs> that's on the video. So yeah, I told you, yeah, those little things happen. So I urge people, think outside the box. With love, Clive, the world is your oyster. Don't be afraid to think differently give yourself permission to say blow it i'm gonna do it mm. you go to the dentist get it over with you go shopping get it over with if you want that's to your fear of course shopping isn't it yeah big time <laughs> big time there's no there's no calming tablets for that <clears throat> when you think about it when you fly there's nobody to get into conflict with the plane is not going to tell you off. The nose will, or the nose of the aircraft. See, it's only five set up straight. You're not going to get any of that. If you go shopping, why don't you like the colour? What's wrong with it? Conflict. But an aircraft will never give you conflict. <laughs> oh, I've never looked at it like that before. <laughs> well, it doesn't do it. The aircraft is doing what it's told to do because it doesn't know it's an aeroplane. If you don't like the meal you've been served, it won't say, what's wrong with it? <laughs> Think about it. Just use the aircraft for getting from A to B. Mm. Think outside the box. Give yourself a mission to think differently. When you think that coming up, me coming up to 80, Jenny 81, and we're hoping health-wise, medical-wise, that we want to go away this September. Mm. Okay. And then on our 25th wedding anniversary in March, there will come a time when we won't be able to do it, but we just can look back and say, we've done it. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing worse than regrets, are there, when it comes to that sort of thing? Right. Have I missed anything out, Paul? (laughs) No, there's a few bonus bits as well. (laughs) I didn't know about your fear of shopping, so we'll we'll try and we'll we'll do something about that. We'll, We'll be able to help. 
But yeah, take my place. No, sorry. <laughs> I, I like you a lot, but that's just that's just that's too much of an ask, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm avoiding it today, to be honest. There's a I'm going up to join them for lunch. My uh, wife and daughter going shopping, and they said, "Do you want to join us?" And I said, "I can't imagine anything worse." Like hanging around the shopping centre, just. Oh. But when you think about it, with the Love Fly community, how many men in the Love Fly community will think I don't like shopping? Yeah, but we're not allowed to say it. So you know, you, you've you've outed us, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what about the dentist? How many people can say, I love the dentist? No. Oh, I can't wait to go to the no, dentist. No, weirdos. Yeah. But if when it comes to flying to a, an exotic destination with palm trees, blue seas, romantic music, especially in Hawaii, when you're flying in Hawaii. We did a flight in from Honolulu to Maui in a de Havilland Dash 8. But the pilot, when we got off, way opened the window and waved to us, have a great time. I can't remember how you do something like that in, uh, it, it's in Hawaii or somewhere like that. It means something, I'll hang loose, I'll have a good time. And um, we were the only two on board. And the captain opened the door and said, well, okay. And I had, um, I think it was a Virgin Atlantic hat on. He said, oh, you're, what do you do? Told him. So we flew. When we got off, he opened the window and waved to us. Have a great time with that hand thing. Unbe unbelievable. <laughs> so, again, I only did that because I wanted to fly a Dash 8. Mm. I know people think I'm weird, but I thought, they're using a Dash 8. So we said to the travel agent guy, we want to fly to Maui on that Dash 8. Okay. Why? I said, well, we'd have a tour of the island, then we can fly back on a Dash 8. I know, <laughs> I know, I sometimes feel a bit weird about the, the way my, the, my thinking. Oh, I think it's, I love the, I love the fact that you just see it as a, it's all an adventure. You're not put off by any of it or concerned, you know, you just think, oh, well, it's an aircraft, I'm getting on it. No, there was um, a World War II plane in Jersey once and we knew the pilot this this actually happened Janet wouldn't do it um but I don't know why you, we all chipped in five this is a god's honest truth we all chipped in five pounds and he filled it up and we flew around the island he was piloting it and we flew around the island did a takeoff and landed I can't remember but it was an old World War II not, not a DC-3 but it was might have been a DC. Mm. I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't a nice. Uh, it wasn't a forty C forty seven, but it, it was just, it was just lovely to do. And then I think when Stephen was growing up, we were in Jersey. We spent a lot of holidays in Jersey. And we were walking along the seafront, and I don't believe I did this. My ex wife was not amused. DC three to Guernsey. Wow, ten pounds! I went straight in and booked the return. Oh, it was just—you know—they they sit on the runway like that because they back down there. When you walk on board, you climb up a hill, square window. Amazing yeah. to fly a Douglas, Douglas DC three, thirty minutes landed, and I've got this most beautiful photograph. When we landed in Guernsey, uh, I remember getting off. It was a boiling hot day, and the plane had to taxi. And Stephen was only about so high. I can't remember who was five or something like that. And I stood him by the side of the aircraft, stood back, and uh, the pilot waved, take your photo now. He said, I'm moving it forward a little bit. And he moved the plane. He said, right, now I'm part, part of the plane. He got, and I've got this beautiful picture of Stephen, eight about five, who's just got off a DC three Dakota. Now he flies around the world with a, a major airline. Mm, amazing. As cabin crew. So those stories you read about, you don't want to pass it on. That's interesting because when Stephen was three, he was flying in aeroplanes. 
when he was three, he was on the BAC 111. I think there were 200 noisy devils out of Gatwick to Jersey. Then we got up to the three, four, five hundred. He was, he was flying everywhere. Um, when he was about nine or ten, there's a lovely story. The, um, some friends of ours, dear friends, said, would you like to come to Greece in August with us? And Stevens, because it was school holiday time, his fare was horrendous. I, I can't remember, let's say about eight or nine hundred pounds. I thought, mm. what? Well, yeah. because it's school holiday. Mm. So I said, no. So I rang up a lovely airline called Pan Am in Piccadilly, London. And this uh, American man answered, that was a nice, hello, how can I help you today? I said, my name's Pete Higgins, I live in, in Surrey. I've just been given a price to fly a, a young boy, eight about, I think it was eight or nine, to the Greek island, and it was hundreds and hundreds. I said, how far can you take me, my son, for 500 quid? He said, how about Hawaii? <laughs> and we'll give you the holiday in as well. We did it. We, we flew Pan Am from London, San Francisco, cup of coffee, down Hawaii. But his fare was about 400 pounds. Including the hotel, amazing. So that that was um, amazing. And then, of course, what we did there, we got a uh, photograph. Janet and I did it. it when you watch Hawaii Five O and they're paddling those boats, I had to do it. So we go out to sea in these canoes. <laughs> uh, now that when you think the Pan Am flight was great, the food was great. We had the adventure of going on there, create a memory. Stephen still remembers those boats. I remember going out when we were going up to the big waves. Stephen was facing me as I was um, paddling, and his face went. And I looked behind, and there's this huge wave. And then I thought, oh, God. Anyway, the next minute is it picks up the boat. Or whatever you can do, and we're wishing along, and it was just so exciting. <laughs> There's lots of adventures, there. and I've done it. And I were recently in Hawaii, and they still do those boat rides. It's worth doing if they get a chance. And for the Americans, I think they're lucky because they're still in the same country. Mm. Yeah, where we had to find U.S. dollars and things like that, they don't. They can just fly there and you're still in America so they got it made if they want to go to Hawaii yeah yeah I agree so there's some of the adventures that we've done that I want love fly just to if they just do a couple of them mm. they they won't forget it keep a diary keep a checklist of the aircraft I mean as a lot of them must be younger than us so they could start now uh, let's say London's in New York a Boeing triple seven a330, make a list. Then when they get to about five aircraft, what's the difference they feel inside? Inside the same feeling. Mm, mm. Uh, to just just go for it. You know, the same when we've done this um the Egypt air flight on the 727. Okay, that was noisy, but I think the rosary beads were noisier inside. That, that, uh, uh, and another flight that we did, there was only six, we were flying from Nairobi to Fumicino in Italy. And now this was amazing because this is the captain and the flight deck crew. I still don't know how they did this because I, I knew a little bit about aircraft, not as much as some of the people. It took off on time. Um, it was a, I think it was a, a DC-10 or something like that. And just before we were flying into uh, to Fumicino, we hit, I don't know, where the cabin crew was, please sit down and stow all up. And it was a quite, I am not know if it was moderate or severe turbulence, but mm. I don't know what it is when the cabin crew have to sit down. There was lots of people screaming and shouting. The captain said, I'll be out of this in five minutes. Give me five minutes. I still... 
having learned so much from all the people and the captain, I didn't know. And sure enough, five minutes later, it came out and it went back smooth. Now, what was amazing was they were mostly Italians on board. I can't do an Italian accent, but it was very exciting noises they were making in the turbulence. <laughs> Whereas me, Stephen, and my ex-wife and two others, we carried on reading the paper. We weren't bothered by it. Mm. And Stephen was, he was doing a colouring book. And we were wobbling around there. So I know that British stiff upper lip. What? Whereas some people are prone to being worried about when something like shaking and rustling and rolling. Take it in your stride. Mm. That even happened on a flight into... We got diverted, uh, but there was an emergency on board. All it was, I, I understand, a bulb had gone, something simple. It was nothing wrong with the aircraft, so they diverted it. When we landed, the Americans got very excited and wanted to get off. There was eight British people there. We sat waiting to be told what to do. We were, well, we're, 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 used, to, we're used to queuing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another queue. We're we'll just sitting here. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a. And that was another one. So there's a, a lot of stories out. We just want the Love Fly community to share some of the things that we've done and enjoy the experience. Mm. And if you've got children, okay, when we flew to Hawaii, what was that? But I can't remember. It was about 10, nine or 10 hours San Francisco, a couple of hours away, and then about a six hour flight on a 747. To Hawaii, we got colouring books, we got model aircraft registration books at the airport. He had model aircraft because I buy him everything to do with aircraft, and there was another book aircraft from all over the world. And I believe there was an I Spy book that was from the old days. I don't know if they still do it. I Spy aircraft, we had that, which was great. And he also had um, a flight log. It was an old British Airways one. They used to do a flight lock for children. That's right. Yeah, I did. You remember? Mm. Well, they filled that in for him. I so Stephen just grew up with the words of of flying, and these people in the, the love fly community, they can do the same. Gather for the children. I mean, I know they don't want to pass the fear on. Yes, but. By giving them things to do and taking control, give the children the comics and all the flying things, and then with themselves, blow it, I'm going to do it. Just do it. Whether they get on or not, I love what you said in the past, Paul, the plane's still going to go. Yes. I don't remember saying that, but you're right. <laughs> I'll take it. I, yeah, that, I think it's on one of the the write-ups on, on the Facebook mm. but it, 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 it really is and with my Stephen he flies around the world and he he always sends me on WhatsApp I'm still learning it flight number and I can go on the flight radar and I'll watch him take off say from Zimbabwe or wherever he is and I've just learned how you push a couple of buttons and you can take a snapshot on the iPad. Then I email it to him and he gets it on board the aircraft. How cool is that? That's very cool. Okay. Then the other day he was on positioning, which he goes out as a passenger, but has to come back as crew. Mm. So we're sitting around the table, bing bong, the iPhone goes. I won't tell you what part of the aircraft he's sitting in, but anyway, a glass of wine and a picture of an engine. I said, Stephen, well, okay, where are you going? And it was Houston or somewhere like that. Then it was positioning. And he comes back as crew. But he will say, Dad, I wouldn't do it if it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. He'll always say that. And I used to say to people, when we've done it in iFlyer, we had two cats. We have to get home for the cats. Think about it. Have you ever been ignored by a cat? 
That's not nice. This doesn't work when a cat ignores you. <laughs> or because a plane's delayed. If I'm annoyed with a plane, it's because we're delayed and we've got to go and feed the pussycats. <laughs> now that happened on a flight, on a fear of flying um, with Virgin Atlantic. There was um, a head teacher, who was a lovely lady, but she was tearful all day. I didn't think she'd get on the plane, but she did. And I said to her, look, if you want the best experience, go as far back as possible. Because if you can overcome that, the mm. rest is the cake. Okay. Mm. Because I said, everybody on this will want to go forward. But don't. That's the expensive seat. Triple, quadruple. So she was on the last seat. And um, I think Captain Steve was up the front uh, during the, the comms. We took off and whatever, and she was still crying. And then, bing bong, we got told to walk around. And I said to her, I, got, I knew I could get her out of it by changing her thought process. So by giving her something to think about, I knew she stopped crying. And she swore at me with a, a teacher's swear, a bit posh, you know, the way. I said, uh, are you OK? What? I said, you okay? What? Do I look okay? <laughs> I said, I hope we're not up here all night. <laughs> so she wants to know why, so she stops crying. She's what? I said, I hope we're not up here all night. Why? No tears. I said, Janet and I've got to get to Tesco. Why? I said, we're out of cat food. What? And that was slowly breaking her into a laughter. I said, Tesco shuts at 10. This plane lands about 8.30 with all the fear of flying people. When we come out, we're going to drive around to Tesco and get some cat food. Then, and I said to her, have you ever been ignored by a cat? It's not very nice. And she laughed. <laughs> and she took the flight a few days. She emailed me at Virgin Atlantic. Pete, I've done the flight just by changing the thought process. I remember the things you used to teach on the Flying Without Fear programme, run a different movie. Mm. It, it works. When taking off, think of your favourite mood, maybe the, as the plane's running down the runway, the rise of the Valkyries, as you climb up into the air. Or some of the wartime music films as a spitfire or whatever it roars into the air. That calming music as you drift around the sky. We've done two glider flights, and Janet went up twice in a glider for 35 minutes, just drifted aimlessly around. No engines. Mm. You don't need engines to fly. I managed to put some music albatross onto a video as it just squeezed around the sky. And when you think we did two of those, and we're still here. Yes. And where we live by RAF Kenley in Surrey, uh, I think Monday to Friday, yeah, the gliders for no more than 2,000 feet just gently floating around. They've been doing it for years. So, another little thing if you get a chance to do a glider flight, it, it's a lovely way. And again, forward, back, and all the things that you do with an aeroplane, the same controls are there. Our glider was pulled up by a diesel winch, so the winch, the diesel engine takes up the cable, mm. 2,000 feet, it's automatically released. If it doesn't release, there's a little yellow handle, you pull that and the cable drops and you, you fly away. What I was amazed with was the knowledge that pilots said. He said, oh, I've got to get a bit higher. And I'm looking at this beautiful countryside, I can see mm. uh, River Thames, all of London, Heathrow, Gatwick from that height. He said, I need some turbulence. Oh, there's some over there. I thought, oh, where does he know? Look, he looked. Anyway, come along to it. He said, now, where he found our house and he flew us at 1,500 feet round their house and I took photographs of our road. Then we went back into land. Another experience. Maybe people got gliders where they are mm. in them wherever they live so again it's very extensive some of the things that, that 
that we've done. Pete, I'm going to have to, I can't believe it's been an hour and a half. I just looked at the time. Can you believe it? Oh, well, Tom, you edit this. You can cut it down to 20 minutes. No, no, I'm going to leave it. This, this is gold, mate. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to edit it down. <laughs> it's brilliant. Well, I don't like it when someone says, I don't like frying. Because mm. it, to me, it doesn't make sense. Now, there's another thing that you said, and I use this quite a bit. Everybody now has to print their boarding pass. Agreed? I don't like it. I like to be checked in. Mm. As you said, Paul, where does it say, oh, Janet Higgins, flight, so-and-so, so-and-so, department, terminal, huh? you have to like it. <laughs> it doesn't say that on there. And then, now I've used that a couple of times and people have gone, hmm. Yeah. When we were in Vietnam, there was a lady crying around a pool because she dreaded her flight that night. Mm. And she was flying to, to Hoi An or somewhere like that. I can't remember. I said, wait a minute, what, what's up? She said, I don't like flying. I'm petrified. I don't, I took, she had all this medication. Mm. I said, forget the medication. You can do it. And I just had this way about her. I said, told her about Janet and I, Stephen, Love Fly. And I said, yeah, have you got your boarding pass? She said, yeah, show me it. And this is 100 degrees. I said, something wrong here. She read it. I said, why? And she got alarmed. I said, why? There's something missing. I said, oh, no. What's that? I said, you have to like it. <laughs> And she laughed. She emailed me from the other destination and said, Pete, I've done it. Amazing. I don't have to like it. No. It was just, that was just, just amazing. I got this email, gave me email address. I said, when you get there, just tell me all about the flight. Mm. It's done it. So you don't have to like it. No, you don't. I mean, it's obviously helpful if you do. But it is a mode of transport, isn't it, at the end of the day, and uh, just very safe. And, yeah, so we always bang on about that. But you're absolutely right. You don't have to love it. I think it's fantastic. I get bored. But I do love I do love flying, you know. I just... Well, you know. hey, another little story that's come up on the Facebook group. Uh, I went to a funeral in Jersey last year, and it was by a well-known British short-haul carrier. And they said... The, the airline will be operated by this airline, different airline. Mm. And we were watching this aircraft taxi and I, was, I had all this music going through my mind, like a plane with no name. This silver colour plane pulled in with no name on it. And people were getting alarmed. Mm. I said, no, this is our plane. But what's it called? I said, I couldn't pronounce the word. Gerald. <laughs> it came from the Middle East, not Middle East, set in Europe, somewhere around the Europe, you know, one of the nations there. I said, it's perfectly safe. He would be allowed here if he couldn't do it. Mm. And people got on in a nervous mode. I got on full of excitement. And when we captain made the announcement, he had this... Um, like a Russian English actor, very romantic, but like out of a Dirty Harry, not Dirty Harry, uh, Michael Caine film with that Russian Englishman and all that. Now, uh, this accent came on, and I loved the accent. You would be taking off into so and so, we'll then fly. Oh, and it was just like a command. And I thought it was just amazing. And some of the things that you've said in the past, Paul, sometimes. Don't let the voice of a flight deck put you off flying. Mm. I won't go into what Steve Ball said sometimes, but he makes me just crease up with some of his jokes. But they're all flying the same. They can all do it. And if they weren't confident, the aircraft wouldn't be allowed to come here. Yes. They, it, there's safety, safety, safety. As it was, the plane took off. I flew all the way to Jersey. It took about 30 minutes. 
and I don't know what happened. I just walked out the airport. I know I was scammed by cameras and security and all that. So I stood up straight. I had this love fly hat on, walked out, assertive, know what I'm doing. We won a little case. <laughs> and the next minute, Peter Higgins, Peter Higgins, yeah. And it was to a hotel in St. Helier. And that's frying the lamb. So when you think about it, I left Janet behind, all the Stephen, I've run out of relatives now. Yeah. Um, I wasn't <laughs> doing it. I thought I wasn't coming back. Yeah, I have run out of relatives. In fact, it got to a point where when we thought we'd get married, I said, well, we can't get married in England because we'd have to hire some standing to sit in a chair. <laughs> but there you go. That's a, another story of, of what happens in later life. Mate. And I'm sure that if there are single people out there, don't be put off in flying alone if you've got a fear. You might meet that person of your dreams. You might not. Mm. But knowledge is power. Learn about the different countries. Learn what you like in a hotel. Check the hotel for the balcony. Do all the little things that you want to do to make sure that you can sit from the pool, read a book. It's all there. Rather than walking around London on a wet day in February or March, you could be in the Canary Islands with 72 degrees Fahrenheit. There you go, so, mate. I think we'll stop there. That was well, fantastic. There you go. <laughs> well, look, take out all the naughty bits. Nah, leaving it in. It's all good stuff. Well, I don't, I don't want to bore people, but what I, I wish I could say in five minutes, flying is fun. Yeah. It's boring, but it's fun, but it's boring. You're going through the hell of going through the airport and all that trauma. It's part of the deal. Accept it. Don't make changes. Just do it. Get on with it. And when you're on the plane, then you can sit back and let it, the cabin crew look after you. And on Virgin Atlantic, they've all been trained by people like David Gott and his team. On different airlines, they've got different training, but you will be looked after knowing that they're all competent in what they do. And the flight deck will be absolutely superb. So there you go, Paul. You take care, buddy. Pedro, yeah. brilliant stuff, mate. Thank you very much. All right. Please edit where it's boring. <laughs>